continuing with the types of inheritance that we that we have in just different objects in nature we're going to take a look today at um, incomplete dominance incomplete dominance is shown here where we have a red flower and it cross pollinates with a white flower and we end up with pink so we don't have red being dominant we don't have white being dominant we don't have red and white spotted flowers we actually have a third unique color so incomplete dominance means that our heterozygous are big R you know little r or in this case we're gonna do like red and white so we'll have RW so the heterozygous would be a blend of the two colors together to give the uh, excuse me to give a new characteristic and this does happen a lot in flower colors there's a few human traits that we can get um, for instance straight hair really curly hair and then a combination um, kind of a blend of those two would be more like wavy hair so that would be incomplete dominance and we're gonna continue with our you know Punnett square examples show what this would look like and we'll go ahead and keep with the pink and the red and the white flower since that's what the Punnett square on the previous screen showed so we have a pink flower crossing with a white flower so up here it shows you that pink flowers are going to be the one of each having a red and a white allele is going to actually give you pink and then having um, all R's would give you red having all W's would give you white so a pink flower with a white flower we want to do the genotypes of the parents so our parents since we have a pink one we know that that one's going to be the R and W combination and then the other parent uh, was said to be white. So the only way white is going to show up is if both of the alleles for that parent are white. So there's the genotypes and then we need to go ahead and do a Punnett square for them. Again, the parent can only pass on half of their DNA because of meiosis and creating zygotes, sorry, creating gametes. They can only contain half of your information. So each of these, again, on the top and the side, represent a gamete. And what we have in our boxes is going to represent the possible offspring, so our zygotes. And we're going to go ahead and fill out the, the boxes just like you always would. Bring your letters down and bring your letters over. And we're going to, you know, when we have an R and a W in the same box, we want to make sure that we're putting them in alphabetical order. So that's our Punnett square. That looks really good. And then we want to do the expected phenotypic ratios and the genotypic ratios. So we always need to be remembering our vocabulary. Phenotypes are the actual physical trait. What does it look like? So our choices, and we are not going to use all of these, but our choices are pink flowers, red flowers, or white flowers. And if we take a look up at our four boxes, we have an R and a W. So that would represent the pink that we have written over here. We have a W with a W, so that would represent white. Then we have another RW pink and WW white. So pink and, and white are the only ones we get, and they are two out of four or 50% each. There were zero red ones. So those would be our phenotypic ratios. Now genotypes are referring to the actual letters, what makes up the DNA. And in this case, the only two possible genotypes are the F with the R or the W. That happens two times, two out of four, or 50%. And then we also had the W with the W. So that also happened two out of four, 50% of the time. So we've answered all of the questions that they have asked us to do for this particular problem. Let's take a look at one more. Now in this case we have two pink flowers are going to cross. So the pink, uh, and we do want to know the genotypes of the parents, that's question number one. So pink, if you look back at your previous example, was a red allele with a white allele. So we have to have one of each. And it says that there are two pink flowers. So that's why we're doing this a second time. Parent 1 and parent 2 are the same. So there's the genotypes of the parents. We have that completed and now we need to do a Punnett square. And again we have meiosis 
they've made their gametes and the parent could pass on the trait for red, they could pass on the trait for white, they can't pass them both on though. So each of our gametes here only has one possibility from each parent and we do need to go ahead and fill out all of our boxes. We want to keep with alphabetical order when we run across a box like this one where we have R and W coming down. Try and remember to do them alphabetically. Alright, this has given us a lot of possibilities. So we have our Punnett square done. Now as far as questions that they're asking, I just want to know the chances um, that the two pink flowers are going to end up with a white flowered offspring or red flowered offspring. They haven't asked us if they're going to have any pink flowers, but if the two flowers started pink, we might look at that and say, well, if the parents are pink, then we would expect the offspring to be pink as well. But you can look here in your Punnett square and notice that the two pink flowers give you some possibilities that are not pink. So this would be a pink one and we have two out of four that are pink. They just want to know about red and white. So if we're only answering the question that they've asked, then white would occur only right here, the WW. That's one out of four boxes or only 25 percent of the time. And then the red would have the R with the R, which is also only one-fourth or 25 percent of the time. So that would be our percent red flowered offspring and possibility of the red and, excuse me, 25 percent possible red and 25 percent possible white.